Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. ALS. This disease was made famous by Yankee Hall of Famer Lou Gehrig, but it is better known to younger generations by the Ice Bucket Challenge. But this social media phenomenon stands for a much harsher reality for about 20,000 Americans. My name is Steve Pickett. I was diagnosed with ALS October 30th of 2015, so just about three years ago. ALS is a neurodegenerative disease. It starves the muscles of nutrients, killing them slowly. A patient starts by losing the ability to move their arms or legs, but as the disease progresses, they lose their ability to speak, swallow, or breathe. It's a motor neuron disease, which basically, in layman's terms, means that the nerves that travel from your brain and your spinal column to your muscles no longer communicate with your muscles and those nerves are designed to regenerate your muscles. So it affects um, really your total body. In my case obviously it's affected my arms and legs up to this point. It will eventually affect my ability to chew, to swallow or to speak. and. Um, Ultimately, it will affect my diaphragm, which is the muscle that causes me to be able to breathe in and out. And that's the way that it affects all people with ALS. Each day, things get just a little bit worse than they were the day before. So when you're diagnosed with ALS, I can assure you, I can assure you that there are no easy days. Um, the only easy day is, as the Navy SEALs say, was, is yesterday only because today is a little more difficult than yesterday and tomorrow will be a little more difficult than today. There is no known treatment, no known cure for it. Um, if you're diagnosed, it's essentially a death sentence um, since there's nothing that they can really do to, to help you. It's fatal 100% of the time. There are no survivors of ALS, unfortunately. The average expectancy from diagnosis for your life would be two to five years. But many people don't make it a year and a half before passing. And you know, when I was diagnosed in 2015 with ALS, I, I didn't think I was gonna see my 60th birthday because that was almost three years away from that diagnosis. Fortunately, I did. And this October 30th, I'll would be my third anniversary since my diagnosis, so I'm probably more fortunate than many. Um, but on the flip side, I know that um, my time ahead is, is uh, certainly limited, but, um, but I'm blessed to have survived as long as I have from my diagnosis. That's where ALS1 comes in. My name is Jen DiMartino and I'm the Executive Director of ALS-1. ALS-1 was founded by Kevin Gosnell, a patient of ALS who refused to sit back and allowed the disease to take more victims. What he did was he researched it sort of like a business and he uh, determined that we have the best and the brightest, um, many of the world leaders right here in the Boston area who are working on ALS, who people fly from all over the world to come to these world-renowned researchers, but they are not sharing anything. They weren't sharing anything. So they weren't sharing successes, but more importantly, they weren't sharing failures. Uh, so what he did was he got them together and he basically pitched them and said, what would happen if you all work together rather than in silos. ALS-1 funds research and care for patients and families. In addition to the research uh, that we're working on, uh, we have a care team. And so uh, the care team is uh, headed up by some of the, um, the nurses within the institutions and also Compassionate Care ALS. And what Compassionate Care ALS does is they basically provide patients with the things uh, they need, equipment they need, they're often very expensive and most often not covered by insurance companies. ALS1 was formed, so it's a partnership of researchers and care providers. Um, so 90% of what we raise goes towards research and 10% uh, goes towards care. Funding and awareness play a critical role in their success. So we have events, gosh, um, 
almost, I'd say almost every weekend or every other weekend. And they range from bake sales, literally, and lemonade stands to things like golf tournaments. And we have a polar plunge. We have a big campaign that we do at Phantom Gourmet called Eat to Defeat uh, ALS, which restaurants can jump on board. Uh, we have a gala at the end of the year. We have Fright Night at um, uh, Barrett's Haunted Mansion. And we have a Falmouth Road Race team who just um, just coming off of that now, and they raised three hundred thousand dollars for the organization. Um, we were also just approved um, and granted two um, entries into the Boston Marathon, so we're excited about that. It is important that we all get involved and spread the word, so that way we can beat this disease. People um, really should know the importance of you know whether it's a dollar for someone is just like a thousand dollars for someone else. So. Whatever people can give goes right towards where it's needed most. ALS One has a goal to find a cure or treatment by the year 2020. The goal for ALS One has never changed from uh, Kevin's inception uh, of it. And Kevin was very, very goal-oriented individual. And uh, the goal hasn't changed. It was to find a treatment or a cure for ALS by 2020. There's really nothing pretty about ALS. I'm not gonna sit here and, and pretend that there is. There's, uh, it's, it's a very, very bad disease. And um, I always say that the one silver lining in this gray cloud that I find myself in is that I've had the opportunity to meet some of the kindest, most compassionate people that I've ever met in my life. And I know that if I didn't have ALS, I would never have had that opportunity to have met complete strangers that have gone out of their way to, uh, to do just absolutely remarkable things for me. And uh, it kind of restored my faith in humanity to see the outpouring of support from people that I had never met before, like I said. In the words of Kevin Gosnell, we were put here on this earth to make it better than when we arrived. How are you making it better?